So in a previous video, we established the general circuit model for the induction machine. And in this one, we're going to look at the steady state model of the induction machine based on the previous model, basically. And in steady state, we say that each phaser rotates with a fixed speed, obviously, because nothing is changing, so it should be a fixed speed. So we can say fixed speed, speed. And what is this fixed speed? We'll call it omega s. And omega s we define as being the time derivative of this angle rho, and that implies that rho is equal to what? It's equal to omega s times t. Okay, now if this is the case, then we can say that our phasors that we defined in the previous, in the previous video, like lambda s is equal to lambda s e to the j omega s t. And I'm going to put an underline here. And this underline means that it's a complex number, right? Because in general, it is a complex number. So you can do this for all of our parameters. So we had lambda r, for instance, and this is equal to lambda r, which is a complex number, e to the j omega st, because it rotates at that speed. We can do the same thing for i s, and we can say i s underline e to the j omega st, and we can do the same thing for i r, I suppose. So, well, you know what, maybe let's make this uppercase I S like that, because it's kind of like an amplitude, right? So I guess we can leave it as an uppercase just to follow that convention, which we often use. So I R prime, again, you can call this I R prime and underline it because it's a complex number, uh, J omega S T. And then you can do the same thing for V S uh, equals vs underline e to the j omega st. And I'm going to assume that we're working with a squirrel cage motor in this, because that's one of the more common ones that they use for these kind of applications. So in that case, vr prime is equal to zero. So if you remember at the end of that video where we established the general circuit model, we said that a squirrel cage motor, uh, the rotor side, I drew it kind of like this, and I said it's shorted in a squirrel cage, and that's just by nature of the construction of the actual, uh, of the machine itself. Therefore, we can say that it's equal to zero. And again, underlines represent complex numbers. So now if we make these substitutions, so we make these substitutions into equations, what, into equations five, six, seven, and nine. And for those of you that are following the, in the entire narrative of these videos, you'll know which equations these are. And for those of you that don't, um, it might be useful to go back to the video where we described the general circuit model. I'll link that in the description below. And so you can, you can understand what it is that we're referring to. So if I make these substitutions into these equations, then you'll get lambda s, and again, this is a complex number, is equal to sigma s, lm i s, again, complex number, plus lm i s plus i r prime. Keep your underlines in check. And lambda r prime complex. Again, these are steady state values, so they're not they're not phasers anymore. So I don't need to worry about the general rotation and all that kind of stuff. I can I can we we'll work with just the values themselves as opposed to considering the whole um, rotation, I guess, or, or the the possibility that it could be at a different point in space. I guess point that I'm trying to make here. And this is sigma r, lm, i r prime. And then you have here in j omega s, l s equals v s minus r s, i s. And this is coming from the derivative, right? So if you remember, there's derivative terms that we had. And so we've taken the derivative and we've simplified that, right? So it was actually d lambda s by dt. And so I've simplified that derivative and I've written it in this form because it's a steady state and you don't want to have derivatives. Derivative terms are are indicative that it's not steady state because you're considering a change. So to account for that change, we say evaluate the derivative, simplify whatever you can. Derivative terms should not be present in steady state equations is the point of the story. Anyhow, these equations, then we can label them as 12, 13, 14, and 15. And one last thing that I want to do before we jump ahead is we can rewrite 15 
because you'll notice 15 has, I think if you look at it, 15 is the only equation that has two different speeds, right? Now what that means is the stator and the rotor have or can have different speeds in general. And what we do is we refer to these, this difference, uh, we define this, uh, uh, how much of a difference there is basically, and we call that the slip. So why don't we define what that looks like first? So we can say we can rewrite 15 as j omega s minus omega r lambda r uh, equals minus r r i r prime. Okay, then you can say that this that this whole thing can be expressed as j lambda r uh, complex number r r i r prime all over omega s minus omega r. And if you define s, the slip, let's say, as being omega s minus omega r divided by omega s, so it's just a relative measure of how much of a difference there is, then you can rewrite this whole thing and you can say that j omega s l r prime complex, a lot of things going on here, is minus r r over s I R underline, I guess you want to call it. I guess calling it underline is a good thing. So this is the, this is an equation, or this is, I guess, 15 augmented. Uh, might as well have called it 15 prime, but we'll give it a new name, call it 16, so we don't confuse anybody. Now, based on equations 12 to 16, what we can do is we can derive a steady state circuit model uh, for the induction machine. And that steady state circuit model looks something like this. So you have your machine here, you have a resistance, some inductance, another inductance, this inductance stays here, and this inductance stays there, and this resistance goes here. And you'll notice we have nothing going on that other side because we said this is short, so we ignore that winding altogether, and then that simplifies our circuit into this. And that implication is seen through the equations 12 to 16 that we had. And we can write RS, we can write J sigma S, I'm going to call it XM, because these are now uh, reactances, I guess you can say, because we're dealing with steady state models now. So this is XM, and I'm going to call this JXM here. And this will be R, R over S. And again, this is, I mean, this is a modeling exercise based on equations, right? So this is not a physical model. This is just what the physical model would behave like if represented by a circuit, right? So some people get these things confused and they'll say, well, where is that actually connected in the circuit? It's not actually connected in the circuit. It's just the parameters behave in a way that that can be modeled using this circuit, because I know machines can be a difficult course for a lot of students and the modeling of machines is not obvious because again you it's a mechanical thing but you're modeling it using electrical parameters but this is kind of how we do that so isirim i'm happy with that what else do we have we can define some stuff let's define some stuff so xm is defined as omega s lm and sigma s x m sigma s x m is defined as omega s l l s so the leakage times the, the speed because again this is this is a steady state condition right so it, it operates at omega s and sigma r x m is equal to omega s L L R. Now, this equation, or sorry, this equivalent circuit uh, can be used with some tests like the no load test and the blocked rotor test that you may have heard of if you took a machines course, which you probably should have if you're taking this course or studying this material. Um, so you can use it. You can use this model with the no ro no load test and the blocked rotor tests to determine the values of X M, X L S and XLR, and XLS and XLR are basically these things, sorry, you can call, so you can call this thing X 
XLS and then XLR on this one. So this would be XLR. Well, the J wouldn't be included, right? So um, maybe we can get rid of that just so it's more accurate. Like this. And like this. Right, because it's J omega, whatever, and then that gives you... The, 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 the part after the J is usually the, the reactants. In any case, but you can determine... X, M, and these, and the sum of those two things using these tests. But the issue is, you, it's very difficult to accurately determine the values of the individual parameters. So it's very difficult to accurately determine what XLS is and XLR is based on measurements. So usually you assume that they're equal, unless these sigmas are given by the manufacturer. So that's just a little practical note, I guess. So what did we do here? We took a steady state model, or well, we, we took our machine and we forced it to operate at a steady state model in, in a steady state manner, I guess. And omega s was the speed that it's operating at. So we can rewrite our phasers as op as rotating at that fixed speed by multiplying them with e to the j omega st. And we said that they're all complex numbers because they are in general. And then we rewrote the equations 5, 6, 7, and 9 from the previous video using our new, newly established uh, complex number convention, steady state, whatever you want to call it. And simplifying those equations, well, one thing we did was we established that there's this thing called the slip because the rotor might not operate exactly, exactly at the steady state speed. Um, or fixed speed, and or that there is some there is some difference between those two speeds, and that difference is defined by the slip. And then we took all the equations, we put them together in a circuit, and we established this model. And we'll look at this model after. And this model, as well as the initial circuit model that we had, are useful for the purpose of control and analysis. And we'll look at how to use these for the purpose of control and analysis in a later video. So. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.